Well, hello there, listener. My name is Matthew Renfro, host of The Fro Show, and you're listening to another great Four Eyed Radio product. For more shows, check out foureyedradio.com. Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this Four Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of Appropriately Inappropriate. Hope you all had a good week this past week. Uh, we're throwing out an episode a couple days early, a little special present for you for Easter and Passover, uh, which I just found out is Passover today. I told you, man, I'm the worst Jew in the world. I don't, I don't know what my holidays That's are. That's amazing to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah, not, last, I'm, last night you said it was cool. You're like, well, no, no, it's so. pretty cool. Obviously, I'm a terrible Catholic, but you're a worse Jew. <laughs> I am, man. I think. Well, I'm, well, I'm a great... Up. Agnostic person, so let's just. Uh, this is a good combo. It's agnostic. It, it means, means you believe when you want to believe. When you want to believe, yeah, oh, that's cool. When man. it fits your needs, mm-hmm. I could fit in with that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like is, is it agnostic? Also, like you kind of don't necessarily believe in anything per se, but you maybe believe in something when you want to believe in something. Yeah, it's, it's basically convenient. I don't even know what agnostic means. I just know that that's probably kind of what I might be. <laughs> well, dude, I think I am that too now. So there you go. I, don't, I guess I'm not Jewish anymore. Stupid. There you go. So, <laughs> uh, guys, follow me on on every social media thing at uh, at I am Kevin Elliott. Um, I just joined Instagram. I don't even know why. I don't take pictures. I don't do anything. You'll be that one guy that is a photo from like maybe right now. There's nothing. It's okay. stupid. Um, but whatever. Everybody's we'll, doing it. We'll follow you. <laughs> so, all right. But you guys, shout away uh, all social media where people can find you the whole night. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Grant Cotter, and you can follow me on Twitter at Grant Cotter. You can join my professional network on LinkedIn. Oof. You can add me on Instagram at Grant Cotter. Friender. Friendster. Friendster. I don't even Come know. on, Johnny. I don't even Get know what the hell it's it. called. It's like you don't even remember 2002. Uh, Tinder. Grinder. Making it happen. Doing it. What I'm else? on none of those things. <laughs> but Instagram and Twitter, Grant Cotter. Hit me up. Johnny. Yeah, uh, Johnny LaQuasto at J Quasto J Q U A S T O on Instagram and Twitter jlocomedy dot com and uh, we're in Scottsdale. We're doing these jokes. So That's true. Yeah, man, we're at Stand Up Scottsdale this weekend. Um, first show was last night. That was a good show for a Thursday. It was a great show. That's what I was told. Crowd okay. was good. Man. Crowd was hot. Mm, it was good. So hopefully this weekend, man, everybody get out and see these two guys perform. You guys are pretty good. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but then on Pretty Sunday, good. you celebrate any version of Jesus that you like. Yeah. Do your, yeah, do your little Easter thing. Come out at 730. The show is Sunday. So you're done with the family stuff. Mm-hmm. Head on out and enjoy the rest of the, the finishing off of the weekend. Um, you guys had saw something crazy driving into town. Jesus. Right? Oh, yeah. First of all, I asked when you left. You're like 6, 630 or whatever. We got in at 3. Yeah. So it's not a nine hour drive. What the hell well, are you guys doing? What did we do? We That's stopped the at the General Patton Museum. We did. And we saw a lot of stuff that didn't belong to General Patton, <laughs> but had his name on it. We got pictures in front of tanks. Yeah, there was army tanks. We chilled and looked at those. Could you look inside of them? I've never seen no. inside of them. No, they're just keeps like. It, keeps off. Let you touch them. I stood on one because I'm a rebel. Yeah. Um, and then we stopped at a subway. And Johnny slept. slept in the car. I slept in the car while you went to Subway. See, I, I only slept three hours the night before. I got up and I went to the gym at like 4.30 in the morning. And then I drove to his place. And then we left. Uh-huh. So I was like trying to stay awake. Badass alert. Whoa. Yo, see, Who's going to the gym to lift at 4.30 a.m.? I, Johnny I didn't want to I didn't want to be rude. That rude passenger that kept falling asleep while you were driving. So I would like take five second naps. Be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> it's okay. You can be that guy. Because I was listening to... Um, podcasts like the one we're recording now so yeah. i hope i hope that somebody out there is driving along the road listening to us mm-hmm. knowing that i do the same thing and we connect on some weird spiritual I level only yeah. listen to podcasts now i rarely listen to music i'm not a big music guy and like i don't know just radio kind of bother it's, it's boring with commercials and whatnot so on podcasts that's, that's what i listen to you don't even listen to rihanna <laughs> no, I know who she is. You don't listen to the Morning Drive. No, no. What do you? What podcast are you listening to? I listen to Industry Standard with Barry Katz. I listen to WTF with Mark Marin, and then I listen to Serial when that was real popular. Oh man! And I, I listen to that. Adnan did it, and I listen to. <laughs> 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 uh, Let's uh, talk about that. Was yeah, good. no, I'm serious though, because for a while I was like, shit, maybe he didn't do it. 
No, I think him and Jay. Why? Why are we? First of all, we're the only people still talking about <laughs> cereal. Um, once again, Friendster. Uh, I think Adnan and Jay did it together, and Adnan is just like had 15 years to fucking think of a great story in jail yeah, and get his shit together. <sighs> I don't know. No. I. It's really hard to believe the whole, either story because the one dude is shady the other guy's charismatic but still has like a weird personality thing about him it's like that old movie what was a movie with blair underwood and sean connery um where like the whole movie blair underwood's like i didn't do it and like he's so believable and he finally gets exonerated and everyone's so happy then at the end it turns out he did kill everybody and like he tries to kill sean connery i'm like you son of a bitch it's kind i of don't like know that. man isn't that that thing like even with that robert durst guy Ooh, oh, the jinx. I love yeah. that. Oh, he's guilty. I, I didn't watch it, but... Oh, he's guilty. Oh, yeah. What exactly happened? This, this show comes out, and then literally at the end, in real life, he gets caught or something? Okay, so here's what went down with the jinx. So this dude, Robert Durst, is a billionaire. His family's so rich. He's got so much money. His wife goes missing in 1981. The, you know, nothing happens. They never find her, nothing. Then, in 2000, his best friend is shot and murdered, and they don't know what happened. And then they finally catch him because in like 2003, his neighbor ended up, they found his body parts floating in trash bags. And then mm. he admitted to doing that. But he said it was self defense. But he's got so much money, he can afford the best lawyers. He got off. Yeah. Damn. And then he gave an excuse as to why he chopped up the bodies. Yeah, he was like, self defense. Well, yeah. Somebody told me that he moved to like Texas or something and dressed up as a woman. Yeah, he was hiding out. Okay, so here's, I guess, the other backstory. So when his wife went missing in 81, his best friend, this woman, was like his point person, the one that was talking to the media and everything. And a lot of people think she knows what really happened to his wife. So then she was having money tr troubles. And then in 2000, he gave her $50,000. And a lot of people think that was hush money. Like She was like, you know, the mm -hmm. case about your wife is getting reopened and it would be a shame if anybody found out what really happened. So then immediately she gets these two checks for twenty five grand. And then she dies. She goes yep. murdered in the back of the head. Boom. One bullet. So they think he killed her to shut her up because she knew what happened to his first wife. So then he's on the run from that murder when he thinks that the case is getting reinvestigated. And then he moves to Texas, pretends to be a woman. His neighbor finds out he's a woman. He kills the neighbor, chops Jeez. up his body, shit. throws it in the water. They find the body. They find that it was him that did it, and then... I think calling it the jinx is an understatement. <laughs> well, it's the jinx because then some movie director made a movie about all this. Robert Durst saw the movie was like, that's interesting. Maybe you want to interview me. And his lawyers are like, don't you? You fucking got off. Yeah. Don't. Why do you want to get interviewed by anybody? And he's like, I want to tell my side of the story. Mm. So then over two years, this director is like interviewing him. And then at the end, they find he kind of, you know jinxes himself by doing that Damn. wow what a psychopath yeah that's like a i had this conversation the other day because celebrities you know they think they can literally get away with murder right yeah when oj kind of did got arrested for other bullshit but no he did aaron hernandez he ain't getting away he's an idiot he's such a moron the stuff he's done is out loud laughable yeah. like the, the mistakes he's made <laughs> Just not even realizing he has security cameras in his house, walking through the house with a gun. With the gun. Like, Shut literally. He could, he could be doing, like, a song and dance routine <laughs> in front of the security camera. Like, he uh -huh. pretty much did that. Like, ten minutes after they were dead, he's <sighs> in his house walking around with the gun. It's like, man, it, you yeah. have no defense. No, there's nothing. He, the Does fact they that... Think they, it's there. Legitimately, a celebrity, like, if you knew, did it, could get away with it. Like, if, if they killed somebody, you knew it. Tom Hanks. I say yeah, Oprah no, Winfrey for sure. For sure. Yeah, oh. she, she eats white babies. <laughs> I think like, Oprah that's has. How she stays yeah, young. Oprah has. That's true. Yeah. No but doubt. like somebody like Tom Hanks, who America loves, he could do no wrong. If he would never believe. Ellen. That's another one. Ellen. Oh. Yeah. Ellen. Yeah, Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> People would be on her side. That, that person probably. Like, Ellen, like we know you did it. Oh, you're dancing. Okay, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Everything's fine. Totally, man. I don't know athletes though. They're just too stupid, man. Everybody, They're very. Oh yeah. Other athletes getting. Some, something in the media, I, something illegal. I don't understand the psychological process, what Aaron Hernandez is thinking. Like, just, I can't leave the streets behind. Like, it just the fact that he, it, it's hard to even understand. Yeah, it is. But that, a lot of these NFL guys are like that. Yeah. Yeah, because you're kind of like a meathead with a ton of money. And even though, you know, your whole life you've been one way and then maybe like, 
you you get a turning point, you get a, a million millions and millions of dollars. You're still that same kind of dumb, ignorant person who's just been training for football your whole life. Yeah, you're getting hit in the head around. Dude, I heard this something crazy too. Like Allen Iverson, I guess is broke. Like, yeah, he's broke. been off and on broke for a long time. Yeah, and so I have a friend that lives in Atlanta, and he's like, he literally begs for money on the street. Like we've seen him out asking people for money, like in front of the Atlanta arena. You got to be kidding. no. That's what he said. Are you because sure? He gets, he gets like a when he turns fifty or something. He gets like a thirty million dollar trust, but for now he's got nothing. What's the thirty mil from the NBA? I, I don't know. His sponsorships maybe, or something? Yeah, maybe. I think your friend think just thinks. Yeah, your friend just thinks all black dudes look alike. That's super it. racist. I, there's no way that could be AI. <laughs> I mean, I, I I grew up in Pennsylvania and I watched Allen Iverson his entire career, and I know he's broke, but I don't think he'd be asking for money. Yeah. Then again, you can't exactly have Allen Iverson as an analyst. What would he say? Like, well, I don't know why he didn't cross him over and then dribble around for 30 seconds and then cross him back over and then go under the hoop. You know, yeah. like, There's nothing he could really analyze because he did stuff no one can do. There's nothing they can do after they're done playing basketball. I mean, what else? Most of these guys, if you're an analyst, cool. Otherwise, what, you want like a car dealership? Yeah. Like Jamal Mashburn. John Elway. Yeah. Just make a ton of money off of that and sit back or just buy a bunch of restaurants. Other than that, dude, the... I don't know what other life skills they really have, but they fucking go broke. Some do. Quick. A lot of them do, yeah. Quick. Um, too much money. Right. So. So cereal. Yeah. It's. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> but, dude, so, okay, you guys are driving in, and you, there's this huge accident off of the freeway, right off the 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right after we were leaving Subway, we're driving down the 10 east, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of traffic. And I'm like, oh, my God. The second we get into Arizona, there's traffic already. California was smooth sailing. We see a bunch of semi-trucks backed up and some cars. And then Johnny looks over to the side and says, oh, shit. And there's a car, and it's mangled up. It's like a silver Mercedes. And you can tell it flipped like, over. It flipped over several times. It's like stuck halfway in a tree. And there's a dude bent over talking to the person who's still stuck in the car. And you could tell that some cars had just kind of pulled over to the side and their emergency lights were on and everybody's like running out. Like, what is going on? Like, people hadn't even got on the phone yet. But we heard an ambulance coming right as we were driving by it. And we look and there's a Mustang kind of bent out. whole front's gone off of it. There's uh, two more cars pulled over to the side and then two semi-trucks pulled off to the side. Just a bad scene. We drive by and we don't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. Then we get to the show last night. And we look on Instagram, and one of our friends, these two comedians, Corey and Chad, they posted a pic of of that accident, but with a helicopter in the street, like from a different angle. And it was their car that had been hit. Yep. Such so crazy. Luckily, they're okay. The no, no, no. Their no, their car got snipped by this asshole in a Mustang who was probably driving too fast, trying to switch lanes in that part of the ten where there's only two lanes. He was probably trying to like squeeze in like an idiot. And uh, and he snipped them, and also uh, ran. I guess ran this Mercedes off the road. But luckily, they're okay. But yeah, they had to deal, they had to deal with that. Yeah. How do you know how long they were there for? A couple uh, hours, I assume. A couple hours. Be, but then right? they said they had to perform that night. Yeah. So they were like, dude, in ten minutes, I got to go on stage and, and be funny after witnessing and being a part of that. Jesus yep. Christ, man! Have you guys seen horrible accidents like legitimately right in front of you, or been in one? Been in one knock on wood, no. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I saw one really bad one one night where it was like a motorcycle rider oh, had gotten hit by a semi truck and his legs were cut off. Oh god! He's laying this in the podcast road. is really not oh, going to be. This is not comedy. This is not getting people out to our show. Yeah. I know. What are we doing? So can so, can, can you get a whipper over? cushion out really quick? <laughs> Fart jokes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Kevin. Know, why are we God, talking why about it? so dark? That round, I'm so sorry. You're like, oh we can talk God. about anything on this podcast. Murderers, <laughs> deaths, yeah. destruction. What's your favorite podcast? You know, about killers. <laughs> Death, murder. Whoa. Can we call Adnan? Let's just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know how Adnan sounds. He's just <laughs> like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know why he's Italian in my life. Yeah, he's really he's definitely Middle Eastern, but you made him sound like a New York Italian. <laughs> So, here we are. Yeah. All right, fine. Let's talk a little comedy then. All right. Everybody a little interested in this stuff. Hey, well, trust me. The shows are funny. You'll come out. You'll enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, Go to Stand Up Scottsdale. We have two shows tonight, Friday, April 3rd. Two shows tomorrow, Saturday, April 5th. And one last show 
on Sunday. I'm sorry, April 4th. And then one last show on Sunday, April 5th. And last night was an amazing show. Uh, Grant and I are co-headlining. Kevin's on the show. Um, we also had a couple, you know, a few other people. And it's just really, really good. You'll enjoy the show so much. And we're cheap, we're affordable, <laughs> and we're easy. So there you go. Yeah, and I think, uh, like, tickets are $12. There's yeah. no drink minimums. Mm-hmm. Really you can cool. get crossfaded in the parking lot by yourself <laughs> faded. roll into the show faded. and just watch it by yourself you don't need to you know buy no watered down drinks not that they are that at stand up scottsdale because they are a heavy pour Trust faded me. faded everybody at the show was staggering as they walked out because their sides were split from laughter and they were drank. drunk as fuck drank headshot drank pour up drank whatever else he says drank yeah. Drank. <laughs> Why you only slipping on two or three shots? Okay. That was easy. See? There uh, we go. Breaking into the hip-hop, doing the comedy for you. <laughs> All right. Another murder that I thought was cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else could we talk about? Jeffrey Dahmer put people in the fridge, which yep. is interesting. Uh, yep. Got to get the right clowns. kind for that. That's for sure. Um, I think if I were to murder my wife someday, I would just hire a Jeez. day laborer from Home Depot. Mm. Because then it would only cost you fifteen dollars under the table, and he could help you clean up the paint afterwards. You know, because people are always getting caught up with that blood splatter. He can call one of his boys to help you. He'd be like, "Ah, Joaquin, ven aquí." Yeah. He whistles. Well, they do it better than me. Your guy whistles. Yeah, that's how they communicate. <laughs> Your guy does. <laughs> do one of y'all know how to whistle? And you're good with tools. All right, come on in. What are we moving? Nothing. Yeah. Just Yet. Pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yet. Have you watched the jinx? <laughs> uh, Con Roberto Durst. Oh, boy. So people can't see this, obviously, but Grant, please explain your outfit. Oh, no, can I? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, let me explain that I, I am... Do. I want Johnny to explain. Because I'm so jealous of it. I'm I am so jealous of it. Here in Scottsdale, yeah, Arizona. I had to drag Grant away from a pool to come do this podcast. Okay, like, I'm on vacation right now. Yeah, well, I know. Okay, I've been indoors for a month straight. I I'm met at beautiful you. Scottsdale. The weather's warm. My joints feel good. I I'm, love it here. I'm feeling what these old people are moving here for. <laughs> yep. I'm feeling like John McCain. A lot of old white dudes in cowboy hats. A lot of them. And yeah. pushing shopping carts. And right now, my outfit is the antithesis of that because I look like I've been kicking it on the love boat. You look like um, every one of the Beach Boys' nephew. You got a button-down... <laughs> A uh, Hawaiian flowered shirt that looks like you may have may may or may not have stolen it from a corpse in the seventies. It's a nice landscape. Yeah, and then you have a pair of board shorts that kind of match perfectly, but not quite with your shirt. <laughs> I mean, and you've got to say the colors. It's there's a lot of oranges, a lot of tangerines, yeah, a lot of seafoam green. Um, you know, I've, I'm just kind of. It's very boogie nights. In I mean, a way. thank you. I mean, I'm just lounging. I'm enjoying the atmosphere, the air. I'm enjoying the luxurious El Dorado Inn and Suites that I'm staying at. Is that what it's called? It's called the El Dorado something. Oh, I'm just trying to give you a shout Inn, out. The El Dorado <laughs> Inn Suites. Which and means the gold. gold. The gold. You like it over there? They got you guys set up nice, but you guys were booked one room, oh, right? Man. Oh, wow. Let's tell this story, Johnny. <laughs> Let's do that. So after we witness a horrific car accident. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> And we're driving down the 10. All we can think of is the air-conditioned room we're about to be in. And the pool. And the pool. And the outdoor grill. We even went to buy mahi at the grocery store. I bought two filet mignons. Yes, you did. I got pineapple. So I also you. got pineapple. Oh, pineapple's good. Yeah. And I'm going to grill the shit out of it on we're the El Dorado's grill. grill. Please come to the El Dorado. I've been watching a lot of show. Bobby Flay. Yeah. Okay, to prepare for this moment. So we got there. So Johnny had stayed at this hotel before, and he told me that we would either have each our own room, or we would be in one big suite that had two bedrooms. Perfect for the girlfriend that invited herself to tag along <laughs> with me on this weekend. Absolutely. So we get to the hotel, and as we're checking in, we say, what kind of rooms do we have? And she looked at us with the look in her eyes that said, why did you say rooms plural? You only have one room. Mm-hmm. And then Johnny said... And that's when my face went, like, and Ernest goes to camp. And Johnny said, oh, well, <laughs> do we have a suite with two rooms? And she said, no, you have one room with a rollaway bed. No, she didn't say with a rollaway bed. I said, she no, said she actually one sold us on the... She goes, you have one room, but there's a rollaway bed. 
And we're like, what? <laughs> and then so we we bitch and moan a little bit. We finally get another room. But we go in to look at this rollaway bed. And it's not a typical rollaway bed in the sense that it doesn't have wheels. Nope. It's um, – have you ever seen um, like – a World War One movie where they sleep in the trenches and they have those cots that they unfold. Yeah, on the two sticks. Regardless it's one of, of those, regardless of when you go to bed, you'd wake up for basic training on this was cot. It, was it green? Also, it wasn't green, but they were nice enough to even tuck in the sheets, which I found <laughs> shocking. And you have to sleep on it as if you're going down a water slide or a mummy. You know, arms across the chest, like yeah. you can't move. Um, so luckily I'm not sleeping there. Johnny's just keeping his suitcase there. <laughs> yep, putting all my luggage on there, just glancing at it, but smiling. Then they hooked me up with a room, and my room, not going to lie. It's badass. It's, it's a lot better than Johnny's room. <laughs> hey, their living room is like a conference room. That's awesome. You can have like uh, you can have a, a th- so many people all over. You can have like s- there's six chairs, there's a couch, there's a table. There's my a- room is 60 feet long. 60 feet Long, like if we were scuba diving, you would need an instructor to go from one end to the other. Yep, sixty feet. I was so mad, but you know, what are you I invited do? you over anytime you want. I'm coming. I got a key made. I actually got copies of the hotel room keys made because did you like metal keys? Did you really? Yeah, so I could just come back whenever I want. <laughs> uh, I'm, awesome. I'm coming over today, Doc. That's great. We gonna grill? <laughs> hey, fool, we gonna grill? If anybody out there's listening, and you want to come barbecue? I will hook you up with an Italian yeah. sausage. How fast will this go on iTunes, Skip? Once we're done, like a half hour. hour. Yes. All right. We're going to be over at the El Dorado. You come over. You just show up and say, hey. We got grilled pineapple. We got Italian sausage. We got mahi. Mahi. I don't know if he's going to share it with you, but he's got some of that. Just in case you're interested, I'm going to have paper plates. Paper plates. You can see my girlfriend in a bikini. She look good. Okay. Grant's going to be wearing his thing. (laughs) I don't even have swim trunks. I'm going to be nude. (laughs) Now, I know you don't know what we look like, but if you go to the El Dorado, you'll totally know it's me. Yeah, you'll know. You'll know. The moment we walked in yesterday, she goes, the comedians were like, (laughs) no, Yeah. How do you know? know? She's like, like, oh, I knew. I could tell you were probably depressed on the inside. Yeah. She's like, I saw you on the interwebs. I'm like, oh, well, that's all lies. (laughs) The internet's all lies and bullshit. That was easy. Goddamn right it is. Uh, WrestleMania, man. Yep. Did you go crazy? Well, speaking of podcasts, that's the only podcast I listen to. It's ridiculous. (laughs) It's seriously, I I listen to every, well, not every wrestling podcast, but I, the, the ones I have time for, and then, of course, mine, because I'm very neurotic, and I like to listen back and <laughs> criticize myself. Uh, yeah, WrestleMania was a blast. Yeah? Man. Were you there? I was there. Oh, it, that's cool. I will admit, not as much fun as, the show itself was as good as WrestleMania 30, if not better, a lot of people think, but the overall event wasn't as fun, because New Orleans was last year, this was this was San Jose. Just, you can't compare New Orleans to San Jose, it's just not comparable. But it was still a good time. Got to hang out with some good people and uh, got to go to some cool stuff. Got some nice little swag and it was, it was neat. That is cool, man. Yeah. You've, been, you've loved wrestling forever. Forever. And never grew out of it. Never grew out of it. <laughs> and never I, re- I regret it often, but yeah, I have not. Are you a wrestling fan? Yes, I love Mickey Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite wrestler. Oh, man. Um, he went through some tough times. He was living in his van for a while, but you mm-hmm. know what? Randy Robinson. He really, really... Um, was just doing it for his life, stapled his own wounds together, which yeah. is something a lot of people don't know. Rambo does that. Um, he, what else did he do? I don't. I didn't watch the whole movie, so I don't know. But he, they made a movie about him, and it was pretty. They good. They sure yeah. did. Randy the Ram. Uh, favorite wrestler of all time. Oh man, it's hard to uh, actually. Rumor mill is we may actually have him on the show next week, and that would be. Uh, it's hard to pick one, but I'd say Jake the Snake Roberts. That's cool. A- as a kid growing up, it was hard to. Yeah, he was the best. Yeah. Dog the bounty hunter. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's Dude, he's a real bounty He's a like He is not a wrestler. First of all, that fool would fuck up Jake the Snake. I wonder Roberts. if he's barely even a bounty hunter sometimes. <laughs> I'm not quite fight. sure. Dude, I mean, well, his outfit is definitely like nineteen ninety one Agreed. WWF. Before they were like, We can't we have to say entertainment instead of Federation. Dog the Bounty Hunter would yeah. fit in perfectly. Dog the Bounty Hunter looks like um, one of those guys in like a, a, t- a comedy in the late 80s that wanted to be a bounty hunter. And he's like, well, I got to look I gotta look the part. And so he went out to a thrift store and just bought a whole bunch of random shit and threw it on his body. <laughs> Doesn't Dog the Bounty Hunter look like he would kick it with Steven Seagal and talk about like tax problems that they both have? Oh, yeah. 
like <gasps> Seagal will be whispering the whole time. Dude, Seagal has been painting on his hair for the last seven years. Mm-hmm. He I taught still me. Love Seagal. Me too. When I was a kid, those movies Under Siege. Out for Justice was my favorite because yeah. he he did on the the New York accent. And it only got one star. I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> Those are my, my favorite movies of the one star movies. I loved Out for Justice, man. He just, he was, he's pissed off. He beat the guy up with a pool cue. He beat the guy up with an eight ball. And every room he walked into, anybody seen Richie? <laughs> it was so great. Him as a New Yorker, I loved it. Dude, what happened to his ponytail? Where'd it go? I think it's still there. No. Isn't he? Well, he's a lawman now. I think he had to shave it off or cut it off. Oh, uh, because it slows him down. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he's, too, too he's the lawman. Legitimate lawman. Where is he? New Orleans. He had a reality show. Uh, no, not even New Orleans. Like the the Lil Wayne ghetto part of New Orleans. Oh, no is where way. He was. Yeah. I feel like Steven Seagal's in all of our hearts more so than in Louisiana. Like whenever you're lonely and you feel like maybe you just need a friend. Yeah. You can always look within your side. You side got a friend. And kick it with the homie SS and James Taylor. That was easy. Uh, I. I feel like if I ever were to get into a fight in my brain, I'm thinking of Steven Seagal because he would do all like his arms would just flail out and block everything, and then he would do these crazy kicks. That's how I would want to win a fight. I would want to fight like Jackie Chan and Rumble in the Bronx, where <laughs> I would just like great. it's pretty good. Fuck up a bunch of dudes on Kawasaki ninjas and then save a kind of ugly chick. Mm-hmm. All right, who would uh, who would you take, uh, Liam Neeson in Taken, or John Wick? I don't. I've never seen John Wick. Oh, oh, I saw John Wick. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, Keanu Reeves, but dude, they killed his oh, puppy. Yeah. Dude, you don't kill Keanu's puppy. I'm taking Liam Neeson. Dude, he, John Wick is like Keanu Reeves talks for five minutes in the beginning of the movie, and then he just kills every single person that he comes. Keanu around. Reeves does. Yeah, dude, it's pretty. First cool. First of all, whoever wrote that movie, it was probably like a 17 year old kid who played video games his whole life. He's like, here's what's gonna happen. Just Keanu Reeves me. is trying to get his life together. His wife dies. He's sad. Somebody gives him a dog. Oh. Then a punk little kid kills him, kills the dog, and Keanu's out for blood. Wow. But then. That's exactly what it is. Sounds like Marley and me. <laughs> yeah, dude, it, w- without the comical um, ca- chemistry that is Jennifer Aniston with, and Owen Wilson. And without Owen Wilson just being Owen. Um, I love this dog. Wilson. This dog's amazing. Song, yeah. It's gonna make me cry. We do Owen Wilson impressions on this podcast. Everyone now. does. Why not? Yeah. So yeah. I can't do yeah. Well, I'm Vince Vaughn. <laughs> is that, a, is that a good Vince yeah. Vaughn? No, that was horrifying. What? Uh, can you can you do legitimate impersonations, man? I can't. Do uh, I can do impersonations of other LA comedians. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really good at impersonating people that no one knows who the fuck they are. But as far as like major celebrities, I I, I don't really spend time. Like we have, we have friends, mutual friends that are really, really good at impersonations. I respect it. I just don't really spend a lot of time doing them. Like my best impression is probably Zach from Ghost Adventures, and that's not a major celebrity. No, <laughs> but he's famous but, enough. Uh, you know. I mean, that fool's not even verified on Twitter, so I wouldn't. Oh call bullshit, him he's not at all. <laughs> Zach so from Ghost verified. Adventures. He's so verified. Don't. How dare you? I mean, I don't know. Is don't. that how we base celebrity now? In L.A., at least. Well, he's verified. Friend. Grant's verified. I mean, look, I know he's glowing. It's, I know. It's no, that's the outfit got me verified, bro. <laughs> Grant's verified. It's I'm not ugh. saying that makes you a celebrity, but I'm saying that within the internet community, um, 13-year-olds think you're cooler. How does that's one get it. verified? Just they just told that. you you were verified? Is that how it happened? Dude, I just woke up one day and it wow. was verified. It's just there. Dude. It's just it's there. Anything, yeah. Nothing that's weird. I should try and get myself verified for something. <laughs> when did it happen? Like, what? Was it after Oddball or something? No, I was on this MTV show. I'm pretty. I, well, I know how it happened. The people at MTV, you call over and you say, "Yo, verify these people." And then the next day, there's just like a blue check mark by your name, and nothing. Your life does not change in any way. Yeah. What was it? Uh, jerks with cameras. Yep. Is that what it was? What? Uh, explain it to the people. Jerks with cameras was a fast-paced 30-minute hidden camera <laughs> prank show where a group of ragtag comedians hit the streets to compete to see who could get the biggest rise out of total strangers. Mm-hmm. Starring Grant Cotter, Amir K, Jeff Keith, Tone Bell, Justin Hires, <laughs> Susan Lee, Kara Louise, Dante Spencer, Danielle Hawkins, 
And maybe somebody else that <laughs> probably good. I don't remember. <laughs> no, this don't... ragtag group of young pranksters, they hit those streets, and I'll tell you what, I jinx ensue. We actually filmed a lot of it here in Arizona, in Tempe. Did you really? Yeah, by ASU okay. in downtown Phoenix, and I almost got arrested three times, and... So it's good to be back. What happened? What did you do to almost get arrested? I put on a straight jacket and took off my shoes and ran through the streets of Tempe. And then I was harassing people, riding skateboards. People were trying to hit me with like skateboards in their purses and push me. And I was drinking out of other people's sodas when they weren't looking. So the cop came three times and was like, I know you all doing something with, with the TV cameras, but I don't want you to film. Or I don't want you to be doing this. Don't be bothering people on my streets. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. And then as soon Stay as out I of Scottsdale, deadbeat. Yeah, as soon as I couldn't see him anymore, back to it. And then finally we had to stop because I was, like, too legit. When they film a show like that, are the cameras pretty visible to see? Like, they're all around, or do they try and hide them? You know, when you're aware of them, you can see them, but they hit them pretty well because they put them in, like, baby carriages or shopping carts, and you'd, they'd be across the street really? and zoom in real far. So where I was doing it, nobody could really see the cameras, but you could, from far away, maybe you could. Did you guys ever do the, the, the classic baby and the baby carriage prank where, like, someone looks in and then it pees on them? No, but that would oh. be tight. Probably yeah. would have been funnier than some of the other stuff we did. <laughs> it would have been good. I'm sure you guys did, had to do at least something with, like, a baby falling or something. Like well, we had a baby carriage. Yeah. Um, and then I took it and was, like, doing extreme baby. Oh, you were, like, parkouring with the baby. Yeah. Baby yeah. parkour. That was pretty tight. Yeah. That was my twist on it. Because they would give us the prop, and then we would all have to do something different, like a different prank with the same prop. You did great with that. I enjoyed that segment. Thank you. I always kicked ass because I'm amazing at everything, just <laughs> like dressing. Dressing is probably top, top Kicking notch. Kicking it at the swimming pool at the El Dorado Inn on whatever street that is. We be kicking at the swimming pool at the Holiday Inn. Uh-huh. Wait, the El Dorado Inn. <laughs> there it is. If you come down today, we'll rap for you as well. Johnny can rap anything from um, the Ghostbusters one and two soundtrack. Yep, I may I played oh, I played both those soundtracks for Grant, and he was like, "What are you doing to me?" <laughs> I was like, "It's classic music." What Don't was, like, uh, put on the Proton Pack. Let's do it. Yeah, this. that's what. It was. Well, I played every Bobby <laughs> Brown selection, uh, including my favorite song of all time on our own from Ghostbusters two. Bobby Christina, get good. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I got you in my thoughts, girl. What's up, girl? Uh, we did uh, cleaning up the town from the Bus Boys from the original Ghostbusters soundtrack. Not this bullshit all female Ghostbuster about to come out. Oh come on now! Don't be getting all hateful. Just kidding. I'm excited for it. I think yeah. it'll be good. I love anything Kristen Wiig's in, and I know one of the Ghostbusters kind of. So it makes me feel good that I'm connected to that movie <laughs> in, in some nine degrees of Kevin Bacon. Bullshit. I think they're all super funny. So what the hell? Yeah, they're all super funny. Who is it? Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, and then who's the fourth? The blonde girl from Saturday Night Live that plays Justin. Kate Bieber. McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. God damn it, she's funny. Yeah. Holy crap, she's. Leslie Jones is getting big fast. Oh yeah. Well, no, that, let's be honest. No, she's been doing comedy for like twenty five years. I know, but I mean, it's all. Well, she had the right break. Book. Yeah. Finally got she, a good break. Well, she's put the work in. I mean, yeah. if she's. Well, I love her story, and I don't know her that well. I see her in L.A. at the Comedy Store. We, you know, maybe spoken a few times. But I don't know her that well. But like when you see a story like hers, that's what will keep you going in like this industry because she's been doing I don't know what, how many years exactly, but I know she's been doing it I think for like twenty five years, without a ton of breaks. Like she's just been funny, she's been doing her thing. I guess she's been touring or whatever. But like then she gets SNL and now she's a Ghostbuster. That goes to show you that you just got to keep doing what you love and eventually, hopefully, you'll get the break. That was easy. Yeah. Just takes twenty five years of hard work, and you too can be love on her Saturday story. Live, you know, some people get it early; other people gotta gotta hustle for it. You yeah. know, it just you gotta stay positive, keep working, and uh, just trust do and it believe. You love it, trust and believe. Trust and believe. We did, <laughs> we did a show one time with this guy. I don't even know what his name is. I wouldn't say it if I, I didn't know it. Uh, and he, he handed out his business cards afterwards, and it was like just a ton of like motivational quotes. And on the back, if you flip it over, it's just his face. And then in big letters, it says, trust, the letter N, and then believe in capital letters. So we say that to each other all the time. Trust hey, man, believe. trust and believe, dog. Yo, if you're that comedian, thank you so much for giving me and Johnny hours of laughter. Thanks, player, player. Oh, God, we have so many people we've done shows with over the years. We could just go off. Just on. the people you meet in comedy, like... I said this once to another comic. I was like, dude, the weirdest people I've ever met in my life have been at open mics. And he's like, duh, water is wet. Like, yeah. you know, you're, you yourself are weird. You just don't think it because. 
we're functional weird. Yeah. There's some people you meet where you're like, what the? What about? Okay, there's one guy, and so Grant and I kind of started together. Um, we've known each other about nine years now, I think. And there are people. We used to go to this open mic in Huntington Beach, California, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, where as many as thirty comics would get up throughout the night. <laughs> Martini Blues. Yeah. Shout out to Martini Blues. R.I.P. And there's there's just uh, one guy in particular. He was an aggressive middle aged dude who was like, ah, this gruff kind of voice. And he put the letters MD at the end of his last name. And he would get on stage and goes, yeah, that MD stands for mentally deranged. Yet he would wear a stethoscope around his neck. Well, also, this dude was like, he always wanted to like let you know how much money he had. He's like, dude, I got two Corvettes. I got yeah. a Cadillac. You know, I got two houses. Like, I know all these celebrities. I'm famous. And you're like, why are you doing this open mic? Dude, cuss a lot. Cuss a lot. Yeah, he oh, was like, man. the rule for the show is like, you can't cuss. And he would go like, they told me I can't cuss, but fuck that fucking yeah. rule. The fucking piece Can of we shit. cuss on this show, by the way? Oh, yeah. oh, he would get up there like, been. cocksucker, motherfucker. Like, he would just everything. And now I think he's a life coach. Because you actually showed so, me his website. Uh, such a bad life coach. Um, I don't even want to say his name. No, don't say his name. Yeah, but you, you, know. you did show me his website one time because you I love know. researching these people. He was just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to talk about that guy. You keep up with the community. I hope he <laughs> hangs out with Robert Durst. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just kidding. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. Bobby Christina, get well soon, girl. We love you. Uh, Fix yeah. your gap. Um. <laughs> There's there's so many people that you meet that you're just like why what are they doing what what's happening not that we have any clue but there's some people you're like oh good you know it's a weird comedy's a weird profession I'm sure here yeah. in Arizona you even got you know oh what about like, what? what about back in the day when uh, when Mencia would have his openers take notes at at the open mics of Martini Blues I didn't even know about that I I was told that back like right around the time Mina Mencia was going on uh, I, I I noticed at the at the open mics. People will. I don't know. These comics I didn't know were like taking notes on every set, oh, wow. and apparently some some jokes ended up on Monuments. Yeah. Wow! I Should saw a we... comic taking notes during your set last night. <laughs> <laughs> You'd laugh, but I mean, he's gonna have some good shit coming up. Yeah, right. Should I not have said that? I probably shouldn't have. No, said you're that. fine. I worked on a show that they had us do that. The, the writers go to comedy clubs and take down notes. Oh wow! And then come back and they would put it in their show. What? Mm-hmm. What kind of show is it? I'm, I'll tell you when we're done. So, okay, a, you know what? It's a very well-known show. Let's take that part out. I don't wanna, <laughs> no, that's the um, last thing I need. The show he's talking about is called The Jinx on HBO. <laughs> yeah. Check it out, All HBO Go. All the jokes Go. in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> a comics. funny show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> All the jokes ended up in the Serial Podcast. That's what happened. Can we talk about where we're recording right now? Yeah, man. We're in the office. I mean, whose office is this? Why is there a Donald Trump doll? Someone with a huge family. Is this? Is, wait, is this? Uh, it's Nancy's family. It's Nancy's family. Yeah. Oh, okay. And she does have a huge family. Where is she? We saw her last here. night. She's like, I'll be here. She ain't here. Yeah, but she also she said, like, let's not have it too early in the morning because I'm going to drink tonight. It's not early. It's 2 yeah. o'clock. We're in the afternoon now. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. What don't is know. that picture behind? It looks like a massive haunted, uh, in, uh, like a... Wow. M. Night Shyamalan oh, no, presents I've never seen that one. That Arizona. Might be new. It looks like an old penitentiary. Maybe. I do. I always like the Trump doll. That thing is just cool to have. You're fired. <laughs> I mean, that has that doll has real hair. I don't know about the real Donald <laughs> uh, Trump. Now. Uh, Donald. So when, you, when you're touring, right, so you get to these clubs, and then they usually have local guys that come work with you. Is that kind of like for you, or are you just coming in to do your own thing, you don't really care? Or... Are you, like, hoping that they're cool people and you can hang out? And, I don't know. Well, we still don't hit the road as often as we'd like to. Yeah, but in, in the cases we do, I hope that they are cool. Because, you know, sometimes being on the road is kind of lonely. You know, you're eating cup of noodles with coffee-stirring straws because you have nobody to get you a fork. So it can Except in our case, we'd be eating that mahi. Yeah! Oh, say oh, what? Mahi, the food's so good, they named it twice. Italian sausage. Um, so yeah, you always hope the openers are cool and, um, a lot of times they are because they're just, you know, comedians starting out in the city and then haven't quite moved to like the bigger yeah. metropolitan. I love hanging out with anyone in town cause you get to see stuff that you wouldn't necessarily see. Like you're not locked up in your hotel room the whole time or whatever. It's, it's really fun to get out and see stuff. And I love Scottsdale. I, I'll come here as often as people allow me to. <laughs> yeah. This place is awesome. It's like pretty nice. Desert. It's like a beach town. Yeah, it's great. Without yeah. a beach. Without the beach. It's okay. Beach town with pretty girls. 
do you you do college gigs and stuff too, right? Yeah, not as many as I'd like to, but still. Have you ever had like the real shitty college gig? Oh it's yeah, like in the afternoon. And- I've never done an afternoon lunch hour, and I've heard that's really yeah. brutal. But I, I've done a couple where um, there's virtually no audience. Like I did, uh, I did a school in Pennsylvania two years ago, and I went to it, and it was a Friday night. And I got there, and they're like, yeah. Every school you do, they're always going to have an excuse. Like, oh, no, it's midterm. It's always midterms. It doesn't matter when you go. It's always midterms. That's what I get every single time. And there were eight students that actually came to the show. There were more kids above us doing arts and crafts. And I actually went up there and said, hey, who wants to see comedy? They're like, nope, drawing. And they're like, okay. And so uh, I actually did a Vine with them, and I just said, hey, guys, just look like you're incredibly sad and apathetic. I was like, yeah. I forget what school it was. Like, are you guys ready? And I put the camera on them. They were just like, yay. <laughs> and the show lasted like 40 minutes. Yeah. Oh, and I did a college gig just a few weeks ago, uh, Cal State Fullerton. The kids clearly had no idea what the hell they were doing. It was a Sunday afternoon at like 6 p.m. or something like that. And I get there, and we're standing outside in like um, a commons area by a bike rack. And I'm like, so where's the show at? They go, right here. I'm like, what do you mean right here? I'm like in front of the bike rack. And they set up, and then they put chairs out in the middle of the commons. And uh, I go, did you promote the show at all? They're like, no, 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 but people are going to walk by. I'm like, yeah, they're going to walk by. They're not going to stay. And sure enough, I ended up getting heckled by three ducks. <laughs> quack, quack. Yeah. Did one one say, ah, flat. One damn duck ruined one of my bits. <laughs> we actually, had, I got two girls to stay, two girls to sit down and stay for the show. The rest, it was just the two no kids way. who set up the show and, and the AV kids. Yeah, it was it. It That's was awkward. It was ridiculous. Um, and what did you did you just run through your bits? Just I think I still did forty time. minutes, but yeah, this is one of those where you're just like it's so funny too. People love seeing others in pain because I tweeted a picture of me in front of the bike rack holding the microphone, and it got more likes on Instagram than any picture. Because so I said, yeah, it's, that's me performing in front of a bike rack, getting heckled by ducks. Everyone's like, 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 like. Oh, he's suffering. Yay! <laughs> because other comedians see that and they're like, oh, I've been there, done yeah. that, like. Yeah. Way to pay your dues, Johnny. Mm-hmm. What's the best and worst gig you, you guys have done? Well, you've done a lot of good ones. <laughs> I've been lucky. Um, worst gig I've ever done. Um, I don't know. I can't really say worst. I, like certain things stand out. Like one time a guy pulled a gun at me. What? Um, like I was performing at a strip club in Compton near Halloween time. But the guy who booked me on the show didn't tell me it was Compton. He was just like, it's Long Beach. Compton. It's Long Beach. Compton. It's like, no, it's... It's Long Beach adjacent. Compton. We're in Compton for sure. And so I'm like walking in and I was like, I think my grandma drove me to the gig. I was 20 years old and I didn't have a driver's license. And I just had like a backpack with my jokes in it. I, we get to this club and she's waiting in the car out front. And it was like a Halloween party type thing. Hold on. Your grandma's waiting in the car. While for you I to do, finish, yeah, in Compton, in Compton, just hanging out in the car. Yeah, yeah. grandma, cool. Because oh, well, I cool. told her it was Long Beach. I didn't say it was Compton. No, I know that's scary. You know? And so we're in the show, and then this guy walks in. Like one girl walks in, just like like just real sexy, like maybe like a sexy cat. And another guy, sexy goes in, thug. He's dressed like a beekeeper, and I'm like, what beekeeper the fuck thug here. And then I go in, and they're like, yo, we need to search you because I looked more out of place than like this black thug beekeeper, <laughs> just like a little white kid with a backpack. So then I'm doing my jokes. Nobody's really listening. There's two stripper poles on the stage, but it's not a strip club anymore. It's just a nightclub. And I'm talking shit to some dude in the crowd. I don't know what I was saying. I was new to comedy. I was not. I didn't have any good jokes. And he just pulls out a gun and puts it on the table, <sighs> and then looks at me. And nobody says shit. Nobody's like, "If you get searched, yeah, wow. this guy that has the gun is like, cool, come on in, man." Yeah. <laughs> and so wow. I finish my set. I'm like, whatever. And and then I go to the guy who booked me on the show. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what? How, nobody nobody took the gun. And then he was just like. You shouldn't have been talking shit to him. And I was like, wait, what? And then he didn't pay me. And then I had to get back in the car with my grandma. No way. Drive wow. home. How long was your grandma out there for? At least an hour. I'm glad she made it a lot. That's right. Grandma had a blunt. She was fine. <laughs> <laughs> grandma was chilling. Wow, you didn't get paid either. No. That's Man. Crazy, man, that's a bad gig. I mean, that's comedy for you, right? Like, just yeah, you walk around after the show holding your hand out, hoping that they remember. <laughs> like Alan Iverson in Atlanta. $25. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ooh, callback. Yep. That was easy. Always is. And, and the, I, can't, I can't top getting a gun pulled. No way. But you, you've done a lot of amazing shows. I've done some amazing shows. Like, last night at Stand Up Scottsdale, <laughs> where Johnny and I and Kevin will have another 
amazing show tonight at 7.30 and another one at 9.30, as well as tomorrow night at 7.30 and 9.30, and then Sunday, just a 7.30 show. Unless you guys come in droves, we will add a 9.30 show because we care about your laughter intake. We care so much. It really, guys, listen, it is it is a really good show. The comedy is so, uh, it, it all, I guess, in just kind of watching last night, uh, it all kind of goes together. So it's not that we're all completely 100% different, mm-hmm. but we still do different stuff. So, it, But the crowd gets really what they want. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back to good gigs. What's the biggest crowd you did for Oddball? Thousands, right? The biggest crowd I performed for was at the Austin Three. No, it was in Dallas, Texas, at the Gexa Energy Pavilion, mm-hmm. and it was seventeen thousand plus people. <laughs> Pretty amazing show. It was me, Sarah Silverman, Aziz Ansari, Louis C.K., Jeff Ross, Brody Stevens. Whitney Cummings, Jesus, and Hannibal Burris. Damn, man, it was insane. Um, Ain't that a chocolate chip cookie? So that's probably my one of my Dude, coolest that's shows. Crazy! What happens? You walk out there, you see all these people, and your first joke hits. Is it just like surreal? No, you walk out there, and the first thing that happens is everybody looks at you and goes, "Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right? I ain't never seen this guy on TV. I never but don't okay, recognize though. him." That's okay, though. That's where you come out and you have some stock thing already, you know, lined up and ready to go, so you get people on your side in a little. Well, bit. Well, I mean, I just told them, I'm like, "Yeah, you guys don't know who I am," and they're but like, I'm here, cheering. Bitch. Yeah, but when there's that many people, like I went on first of a of a like a four and a half, five hour comedy show, I went on the top of the show. So, like, a lot of people, like, eating hot dogs still, like, texting, like, walking around. So you really have to, like, fight to get their attention. And, like, it was kind of hard. It's not as easy as you would think. Uh, how long did you do? Ten minutes. And of that time, how long did it take to grab them? Two minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Damn. That's, for that amount of time, it's like, man, you're fighting that, too. But then when you get them, that's got to be the best feeling ever. Well, because the laughter comes in waves. I mean, just being there was the best feeling ever. Like, knowing that, like, all my comedic idols are standing right behind me, like, and just being on the same show with them, that's the best feeling ever. And then mm-hmm. The performance is, like, secondary to that. That's awesome. So it's pretty cool. 17,000 people. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, you know, I like to keep things more intimate, so uh, <laughs> I've never had that option. <laughs> What's your biggest show or best show? Um... I'd say actually a couple weeks ago, uh, I got the headline. Cal State yeah, Cal State. The, <laughs> du- the duck showed up. <laughs> Those motherfucking ducks. Uh, I actually took a picture of the duck, just because I wanted and proof. It home. Mine yeah, as well. I wanted people to know like that's the duck that can't keep his mouth shut. Um, no, I got to headline the the Bray Improv um, a few weeks ago, and it was really cool because like I, it's one of the clubs I kind of would have done over the years, but it was a it was actually a night where it just I was set up to headline, and um, and I just pretty much got to do what I want. I uh, had a guy come in and film it, and we, you know there were 230 people there, so it wasn't full house, but it was the night after uh, St. Patrick's Day, so 2:30 is pretty good, and it was great. I ended up doing almost an hour, and just felt really good to just get up there and just be yourself and breathe and just enjoy your, you know, what you've written over the last like so many years. Cause I, I spent a lot of time figuring out what I wanted to do, and so that it just meant a lot when you know, people come out, and it was really cool. Um, and just you know the couple TV spots have been fun. Just Gotham Comedy Live was a blast, and uh, Comics Unleashed was really fun. So, is the video from Brea? Are you gonna put that out? Nah, just uh, I'm gonna use it for like submissions for festivals and stuff, and maybe late night submissions if I ever have the balls to <laughs> figure one out. That's awesome. Yeah. And then yeah, the worst show is that Fullerton, or do you have something? The Fullerton one's pretty hilarious. I don't have anything like getting a gun pulled on me. I, although I did do a room in Compton three times, that was terrifying. But I must say, even though he pulled the gun out, that wasn't like the worst show I've ever done. Like that was just like something stands out as like, oh, kind of bad. But I've done like, like I guess in terms of like shows, literally performed for like two people. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done stuff like that. Oh but yeah, I don't, th- I don't even think that's the worst. You know, because I'm no. to me, I know it's just like it's like weightlifting. You know, mm-hmm. like just like, the more you do it, the better you get. So I never really dwell on it as being yeah necessarily a bad thing i mean there's some nights you you get up at the comedy store at two in the morning and you're you're in front of two people but that's still time to just talk sleeping one sleeping (laughs) and you're sleeping but like it's still time to just get up there and talk and you know do your thing so like i remember one time i bombed real bad it was like a, a big showcase for this comedy festival and i 
just got on stage and I immediately said, second I go up there, like five people start writing, taking notes and there wasn't like a big crowd and I just started sweating. I mm-hmm. never really sweat on stage, but I'm like beating sweats to, and like trying to act like I'm not sweating, but everybody's looking at me like, why is he sweating after one minute on stage? Yeah, and it, it was happens. like a five minute set and I'm just like, uh, like trying to, I'm choking on my own throat, like yeah. nervous and that was really bad. That's the worst is when you when you really start getting flushed because you know something's not going well and you start to feel uncomfortable. Oh, man, that's the worst. You just want to – every bodily function just wants to shut down when that happens, and it's terrifying, and that happens to everybody. Yeah. So. But the good outweigh the bad. The good shows. and dude, The best is just having a killer set and the crowd – like you're just in that pocket. Yeah. yeah. That's the most fun like, ever. Like Johnny was saying, the – or he, we were talking on the drive here, and he's saying, like, you know, every once in a while you do that show that just keeps you going. Like, you have that great set, and the crowd's great, and it, like, reiterates, like, damn, this is why I do comedy. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I guess I'm kind of good at this. Like, I, I know it. I got to keep fucking doing it. Yeah, and you keep chasing that high. That's what it is. Yeah. And speaking of high, there's a, a show that I was supposed to be on in L.A. last night, but obviously we were scheduled here. <laughs> I just found out that Paul McCartney was in the audience. So oh, could have done every set. comedian is posting pictures of them with Paul McCartney. Yep, I was going to be on that show, but was in Scottsdale. Not regretful, happy. Just saying, <laughs> that's what happens. But we, you, you know what? It's like, dude, do we even care about anybody from the band The Monkees anymore? Anyways, Beatles. Like, <laughs> I love the Monkees. Oh, I will always Beatles. love the Monkees. Yeah, I love the oh. Monkees. Monkees are my shit. The Beatles, no, nah, not, not so much. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> that was easy. Um, guys, let's, we'll wrap up. Um, again, everybody come out to Stand Up Scottsdale, man. I'm putting on shows. Uh, five more. Two tonight, two tomorrow, one Sunday, 7.30 and 9.30. Get out there, man. It's a good time regardless. Dude, last night's show was amazing. The crowd was electric. Every comic was on point. They brought it, gave 110%. Yeah. The drinks are strong. Uh. The club is awesome. Word. The nightlife here in Scottsdale is amazing. Dig it. We got a barbecue at our hotel. That's right. Johnny's got an extra cot in his room if you get too turnt and want to sleep over for a little bit. Roll away. And, you know, we're just going to trust and believe. Trust and believe. All right, guys, so thank you for coming in. Uh, yeah, everybody, we'll see you all this weekend. Yeah. Mama, I love you. This has been another proud production of the Four-Eyed Radio Network. You want to see more shows, go check out www.fouredradio.com, you wankers.